Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. I am Abe with mysticgenmara.com, a small town mystic from the middle of Idaho. And today, tonight, whenever you see this, I am offering the monthly energy reading for the element of fire and the month of August of 2024. Um, I read intuitively, so whenever <laughs> whatever comes through is coming through from my guides and guardians. I'll read what's on the cards or in the text, but we'll let them interpret it. Um, we're reading with the I Ching and various tarot and oracle decks. If you're interested in any of those, you can find them linked in the description down below. And if you're curious as to why I read elements instead of zodiac, that's also in the description. I have a video I made about it. And the energy of fire covers Aries, Leo, and Sagittarius. So if you're Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, or have fire high up in your birth charts, then there's a link down below. It's not a um, sponsored ad or anything like that. But it's the natal chart through Llewellyn. It's so worth checking out if you've never had your charts done, um, especially the one that's linked. It gives you your main birth chart with all the houses, what planets, and all that fun stuff's in it. And then it gives you 10 to 20 pages of what that means for you in this life. And trust me, I go back to mine all the time. It is fascinating to read through it and be like, oh, well, that explains a lot. Um, <laughs> so if you're interested, you can check that stuff out. And we'll start off here with our I Ching hexagram. And I cast the hexagram beforehand save a little bit of time on the video uh, and the hexagram for fire is number nine the lesser nourisher the lesser nourisher is success dense clouds giving forth no rain approach from western outskirts so when we talk from the west in a lot of cultures we're talking about the underworld or kind of those who've passed over but that doesn't mean it's negative. It could just mean that there's a message coming through that may not be what you're anticipating. Um, and as it says here in the book, the clouds give forth no rain signifies our affairs are still going forward. What it says about their coming from the West indicates matters have not reached the point in which we can take action. So there's something coming in. Your plans aren't being told no, just maybe not right the second, wait a minute or two because there's there's some things going on behind the scenes that you are not aware of if I are. So let's start with our foundational line down here on the bottom. How could returning to this path be blameworthy? Going back to your roots, how is that a bad thing? Because if you go back there, you can actually start to understand how you got where you're at. And in most cases, when you start to process through, offer forgiveness, see the different healings that have already occurred in your life. There's no harm in examining history. It's just don't live there is what I'm hearing. So our second line, compelling ourselves to go back brings good fortune. It may not be the most pleasant thing in the world to look back on your history, on how things have been in the past. Even if you've kind of veered away from the origins of what your spiritual journey has, Looking back and seeing, where have I come from? How did I get here? How have I grown? Because n when you look back, and this, at least for me, when I look back at the things that have happened in my life to where I am now, there's times where I'm like, well, that was an interesting turn of events. How did I get here? And that's what they're saying is it's not about not going back there. It's just looking back. How can you grow? How can you see the growth from that? So our third place line is the chariot is separated from the spoked wheel. Husband and wife stand glaring at each other. <laughs> when you do the work, especially when you're looking at like past this life or even past lives, looking at a karmic cycle, you can run across things that will have you angry over nothing. Sometimes it's angry over something big, but like it says, the chariot is separated from the spoked wheel. Husband and wife glare at each other. They didn't, neither one of them had a role in the wheel falling off. It just fell off. So what they're saying here is there's a lot of chaos that may be going on, but there's not one person who's to blame when you look back. It's not about blaming. It's about under, coming to an understanding for you. So our 
fourth place line, which is our only broken one for fire this week. Owing to, or this month, owing to confidence, bloody and terrible deeds are avoided. No error. Even though there's chaos running around, even though there is stuff not going the way you'd like it to, it doesn't mean that things are going wrong. Owing to confidence, meaning you know what you're, you know, what goals you're looking for. You're examining the past, which can cause a little chaos, but it's to understand how did I get here and how can I move forward and not make the same mistakes again. That's where the bloody and terrible deeds are avoided because you've looked to the past to learn the lesson. There's no error in that and that is a blessing to move forward. So our fifth place line, confidence is like a cord to bind the heart of others. With it, we enrich our neighbors. When you can show outward confidence, fake it till you make it. When you can do that, it binds to the heart of others, meaning you inspire other people by your confidence. And let me tell you, most people who are really confident and they can go out there and they can do the thing, it doesn't matter what it is, and they can show some level of success, if you were to get them alone and ask them, did you really know what you were doing when this thing kind of blew up but you seemed to handle it? They'll tell you no every time. Why? Because you're confident in the outcome, not in the process to get there. How you get there is totally outside of your control in almost every circumstances. There'll be somebody out there right now saying, that's not true. <sighs> Trust me, you can plan and plan and plan and plan and plan. Life's going to happen outside of your plan every time. That's why when I talk about stuff, I say focus on the goal. Worry about the next step because the next step will get you to your goal. But if you worry about every step that you have to plan it out to detail, universe is going to come in and be like, <laughs> no. So our capstone here is the rains are falling and a time of rest has come. Virtue continues to increase. At this moment, persistence would bring serious trouble to women. Were the superior man to venture forth at this time of the full moon, he would be courting calamity. So with this, what are they talking about with it? So overall, this month, work when you're ready to work. When things are inspired, go for it. But when things start to get rainy, things start to get a little bit drudged down, when things are just not as fluid <laughs> as they normally would be, take the time to rest. Do not ignore the universe's call to just chill, relax, don't push it. Because overall, this month looks like it's going to be a good month for some things to occur. But it's going to be stuff behind the scenes. It's going to be the uh, past your this life or past karmic life, seeing what needs to be adjusted. See how far you've come. Learn from the mistakes that were made to prevent future mistakes. That is the key going forward this month. And when you feel that just exhausted drain, the I Ching's talking about taking time to rest. There is no virtue in trying to, I will push through it. There's no virtue in that this month. This month is about do the work, take the rest, continue the work, take the rest. And that's kind of the pattern that they're wanting to set up for this month. It looks like a good month from the I Ching standpoint. Let's get a little bit more uh, clarity from our uh, cards here. And there's about four and a half weeks in August, so we'll go with a five-week reading. Um, I read each week a guide or guardian, a message from source, and then a uh, lesson or challenge from the tarot. The guide or guardian is literally that. It's how it comes out for you, whether it's guiding you through the week or guarding you from unexpected hiccups. The message from source is a positive, affirming um, support. Sometimes it's just a spiritual, hey, you need to hear this for your own well-being, however that manifests for you. And then the lesson is, or the challenge is a lesson to work on, something to meditate with, or a challenge might be coming in kind of a heads up, hey, this is coming. So we'll start off with your first week's guide or guardian, and it's honesty and communication. 
So fire, this first week, the angels of honesty and communication are coming in. Think throat chakra energy, but also working with third eye energy because when honesty here is activated and you're being very open with your communication here, it's bringing you in to a balanced state. That's going to help open doors, but they're also saying with the I Ching, being honest with yourself when you look back at your history, understanding that there are things that have happened that you can grow from. There are things that you've maybe made a mistake in the past for that you are heading towards repeating. Examine what happened when what went wrong the first time and short circuit the issues in the future. That way you can move forward in confidence and grace. And they're saying through doing that though, it's gonna be something you have to be honest with yourself and stay open communication with your guides, especially this first week. And let's see what Source has to say. Source has to say, seek, seeking out answers, seeking out guidance, seeking out people to support you as you're going through it not people who enable you to or um, open the door to oh it wasn't your fault honey that's not the case seek out people who are going to be honest and upfront things happened you were involved how can you prevent it from happening again but what source is wanting to say is when you seek out the answers and you seek out honesty and truth it might not always be the most comfortable thing but it's going to be what you need in that moment. It's going to help you grow and it's going to help you bloom into what you are, into the beauty of who you are in your soul level. So there's a lot of intensity this first week. Um, your lesson or challenge is the seven of summer. No more procrastinating. Your power comes from making decisions. Confusion arises from over analyzing options. It's really working with this. Are you willing to be open? Are you willing to be honest? When the answers come through, take them at face value and see how it plays out. If it really doesn't fit at all when you're focusing on honesty, then examine if there's another layer to it. Messages and dreams especially are layered <laughs> in almost every situation. So look at things from that perspective because when you look at the seven of summer he has a crystal that's showing a s multiple rays of a rainbow so there's a lot of ways you can look at a situation but don't over focus on oh well, i have to figure out this one little dinky uh, piece here is that the important part or step back and look at the broader picture is what they're saying so don't get too wrapped up in the details you're looking at big lessons or at least um pathways this month it's not detail oriented is what i'm hearing your second week's guide or guardian is trust the universe these angels come in to help you understand how you show up in the world whereas the first weeks we're talking about being honest and open to communication this week is when you hear the communication when you get the messages from source when you get those uh tarot readings if you will are you willing to listen to the messages that source brings through sometimes you'll get a message that has n in the moment nothing to you like that doesn't make any sense at all why would you even say that and then you'll go back and look at that was what was said again a week later and be like oh <laughs> now it makes sense but are you willing to trust the universe are you willing to work with and hear the messages allowing yourself to go down the path of examining your past understanding the lesson and how it can apply to a future pattern and how you can clear that pattern because the universe has all the answers it's just a matter of are we willing to listen and your let mess the <laughs> message from source is confide if you need someone there's always someone who you can trust you can confide in when you were working through some deeper spiritual stuff, especially when you're looking at your history, having a trusted person, emphasis on trusted, that you can talk to and confide in, be like, I keep having this recurring pattern in my life. The more I've looked back, it's like, what am I doing wrong? What am I missing here? Going back to that honesty part. 
And having someone you can confide in, they can sometimes help you see a pattern, even if it's not through words. Sometimes it's through an action. Sometimes it's being, they'll make a comment of something that you're saying, but you're not realizing that you're saying it. That happens more frequently than I want to admit. Um, <laughs> so find a person the second week that you can confide in. And they're saying make it's going to be someone that you're close to, you're bonded to, kind of like a... I'm going to use this word, but I'm meaning it as in a closeness, not in other ways. An intimate partner. That doesn't mean someone you're sleeping with. In most cases, it means someone you're not sleeping with because there's a connection without all of that. And that's what they're saying with this confiding part. Your lesson or challenge from the tarot is the two of autumn. Bring fun into everything you do, juggling multiple priorities or jobs, an exceptional talent for multitasking. This week is going to be, could be a little bit intense, and these angels are coming in, or fairies, sorry, are coming in to say, you can juggle a lot, but it doesn't have to be that way all the time. When you need to juggle, juggle your little heart out, but don't forget to have fun. And sometimes when you're having to have fun, you have to take all the things that you've got juggling, you stop them all, you set them off to the side, be like, give me a minute. I'm going to go put my foot feet in the creek. I'm going to go play with the dog. I'm going to go throw the ball with the kids. Take the time to enjoy life. You're here. The lessons are always going to be available. But part of the lesson is learning how to have fun. We are here to enjoy life. Working all the time, being miserable all the time is not enjoying life. That's not fun. That's not prosperity. I don't care what your bank account looks like. That's not prosperity. Prosperity is being able to enjoy life to its fullest, whether there's money in the bank or not. And that doesn't mean to go frivolously spending. That means know the value of the things that are important. The money is always going to be there. There's always going to be money available somewhere. But you're not always going to have the time with your puppers. You're not always going to have the time with your kids. You're going to hit those teenage years where you know nothing and they want out of the house. <laughs> and it's going to be till they're 25-ish before they click and they're like, oh, then they're going to start to realize the value of what was being offered beforehand and why things were the way they were. Don't forget to have fun. That's kind of the lesson and the focus of the second week not sure how that got tangent but we'll go with that <laughs> uh, your third week's guide or guardian is signs and reminders the angels that bring in signs and reminders they're the ones where you're walking on the street having a rough day can't see straight because the stress level is driving you crazy and you see a feather a feather laying on the ground that's the angel saying what are you doing why are you stressing over that you're at lunch relax enjoy your lunch there's a birds Listen to the birds. Check out the flowers. What do you smell? What flowers are around? Is the grass freshly cut? Hopefully you don't have allergies. Uh, but look for things like that. They're also saying butterflies are a good indicator that the angels are close to you. And pay attention if there's a dragonfly around because that usually means you have an ancestor or a guide that from a long time ago that's coming back to deliver a message. It might be strictly subconscious. You may never consciously be aware of it, but be open to the experience of signs and reminders. Uh, if you're seeing 444, that's the angels coming in. 111 is generally God, Source, Divine coming in to be like, tap, 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 hello. <laughs> Pay attention to those in this third week is what I'm hearing. Um, your message from Source is security. This week is about feeling secure in your body feeling secure in your place in this world. It's not something that you'll always feel. There's no illusion here. I'm not going to per be like, from here on out, it's gonna be just rainbows and butterflies. Yeah, no. Um, but when you feel secure in, your, in who you are, the outside world can get as rough as it wants, but you know your value. You know who you are in your heart, in your soul. That kind of security is anchoring and that just like it talks about in the I Ching is going to be a confidence booster for other people you may not even be aware that you have suddenly found this anchor point but other people are going to notice and that's the value in finding security God source divine is saying your security lies in your connection to source your security lies in the connection to the people around you it doesn't matter what else is going on your security is assured when you keep the connection 
to God, Source Divine, Lord and Lady, however that manifests for you. But keeping that connection alive is what's going to really keep you feeling safe and secure through this month, Fire. Um, so your lesson or challenge from the tarot is number 16, life experiences. Let go of belief systems that no longer work for you. An important life-changing event, a situation that leads to significant opportunities. Tower moment this week. <laughs> And that's where you need that security from source. Life experiences, the tower concept, is you're tearing down the stuff that doesn't work. You're going into the past, you're taking the lessons, the valuable pieces, out of those lessons and bringing them forward. Every experience has a lesson in it. However that lesson shows up is how you are going to move forward in life. If you don't believe me when you were little and your mom or dad or grandma told you don't put your hand on that stove and you and all of a sudden your little fingers were burned you learned a lesson real quick everything in life has a lesson attached to it this third week is saying when you are trapping into that security you're seeing the signs and the reminders of source being up there trying to get your attention your guide stepping in saying hey why are you worried about this the life experiences they're getting your attention they're helping you feel that grounded and secure state fire because you the life experiences that you've had have brought you strength in this moment you don't have to keep reliving those old time things learn the lesson from them and the cycle breaks let's see what our fourth week has for the fire family we have surrender <laughs> okay when we step into the uh, path of surrender with the angels, it's not about giving up. It's not about, well, I just can't do this anymore. When you surrender in this context, what I'm getting is the angels are stepping up to say, surrender the stress, surrender the drama, surrender the, I have to be in charge of all the details. No, you don't. Your goal is to set a main focus and to take steps accordingly. When you surrender the goal to source, to God, source divine, or to the angels, it allows them to set things in motion where you, they'll give you the next step. So if you do this, this is where we're headed. Your focus is here. They're showing you what to do next. And that's like with the I Ching, you don't have to do know the end game right now or every step along the way, the details. You're focusing on the goal. And it might be that you have to take some time take a breather this month could be a little intense fire that's really wanting to focus on there's a growth perspective coming in yeah it's your energy this is a high summer it's really about fire but that also means that you are going to be a little bit more open to your past and that's a good time to reflect a little bit but also grow and enjoy they're really wanting to emphasize the joy thing but when you surrender the journey to your guides, your guardians, to God, Source Divine, there's going to be a lot of fun. There might be some tears, there might be some frustration along the way, but it's going to lead to a better outcome, and that's what they're wanting to say about this month. <laughs> you can't make this up. Anyway, um, your message from Source is Evolve, and this is what I call the Merlin card. This is really about growth potential. You're surrendering the control over to God, Source Divine. You have released the magic to the universe. This card is so full of symbology of once you release your intentions, once you release the magic, it allows the growth to occur. To gain the point of growth and release, you've had to go through struggles. You've had to go through challenges. You've had to go through things that were uncomfortable or unpleasant to gain wisdom. Knowledge is book learning. Experiences are things that happen in life. When you take knowledge and apply it to an experience, you develop wisdom that allows spiritual evolution, that allows energy evolution. Evolution is change. And what is magic? Change in accordance to will. When you have set yourself up with goals, dreams, and ambitions, and you work with source and you surrender them up, don't hold on to them. What, what's the point of that? Release them to source, hold the focus, and you'll be surprised the 
miraculous that occurs, or the magic, if you prefer that term, which I do, because I like magic. That sounds fun. So, um, let's see what the tarot has for this fourth week for our fire family. We have the six of spring. Wonderful news is on its way. Smart choices that bring rewards, success, and public recognition. You have a lesson this week, fire, and it's not the most comfortable one. Surrender. Fire wants to be aggressive. Fire, by its nature, is passionate, is, uh, why would they say that? Flamboyant. <laughs> Sorry, that was the image they got, and I was like, wait, what? Um, but with the Six of Spring, there's a lot of things that are available and open to you. And a lot of them are going to be things you might miss if you don't surrender and work with the evolution. This fourth week, there could be a lot of times where you just get inspired to go do something fun. Go on a picnic after work. Uh, take the kids camping. Go camping yourself, by yourself. If you're single, go camp. It's relaxing. It's fun. It's spontaneous. It's also allowing you to surrender the stress. You don't need that. Give it up surrender the tension it'll be there when you get back this drama at work is always going to be available if it's drama at home surrender it to god source divine who's going to be the best therapist and counselor in the world the angels surrender it over and then follow inspired action it doesn't matter what the other person's doing this is for you this is your spiritual journey this is your growth potential that is your choice to evolve use that energy to its fullest extent <laughs> now let's check out the last week of august and get this wrapped up before we turn it into an hour-long episode here what do we have who is our guide or guardian for the last week of august for fire family we have spiritual growth the angels of spiritual growth and they're wanting to emphasize not emphasize bring forward this is a good time to call on Metatron if you've never worked with him. This is a great time to introduce yourself. They're also saying that you can work with any guide that, or guardian that you are feeling drawn to. They're saying Metatron because he has a very special place in the heavens, but you can work with any of them that are helping you with spiritual growth. And there's a long list. Some I've introduced. There's, <laughs> there's a lot more out there. Trust me. But with spiritual growth, these angels are saying this month has been had its ups and downs. There's been some things that you may not have liked. There might be some growth that you've realized how your choices maybe <laughs> led to some lessons. Um, and as that has went on this month, coming down with the I Ching, the outcome, the rain finally comes. Know when to take a break. That's kind of what they're talking about is as you go through life there's ups and downs there's things when you can push forward there's times when you need to rest there's always that little reminder learn how to have fun in everything that you do even if it's something frustrating learn to smile there's been personal experience here real quick in my life there's been some times where i've wanted just to be angry and frustrated and it still happens but i've learned that if you can keep a subtle smile in your eyes or even just a little smirk on your cheek a lot of the times you and yourself can keep their negativity off of you so it doesn't affect you as much it might frustrate you later be like I can't believe that was going on but then you can laugh about it because you remember that that was them that's over there it's not my problem know the time to use that particular skill but it else it's something that you can develop is being able to smile through adversity it's not easy it's not always the most pleasant thing but you can remember this is their stuff if even if I'm the ones in the middle of it I can smile because this is something I can learn from it's a growth potential it's finding joy in the most miserable finding joy in the simple and finding joy in happiness it's a unique gift but it's something to work on we all do it and I'm, I'm not there just an experience that I've had where I can learn to keep their stuff away by simply smiling about it your message from source is energy. This is so much fire energy in this as well because it's a lion. It's flying through the air. You can see like there's some sun rise over here or sunset depending on how you want to see that. With this, 
when you work with spiritual growth, you start to develop a different kind of energy. This energy is the energy of life. It's that passion. It's the sustaining energy. Fire tends to be pretty flashy. It gets really creative, really into something, and then gone. It's over. When you have this kind of energy, though, it's about growth. It's about stable. It's banking that fire so that the passion stays, that the joy expands, that the project you're working on and the passion that you have for it is sustainable and it keeps going. And by doing so, you spread that confidence that you build and that you might be putting out the illusion that you have it because you haven't quite developed it in here yet you're putting it out there and other people are being warmed by that confidence by that growth by your expansion and spiritual evolution by the <laughs> magic you're using if you choose um, but that's what they're talking about this last week is understand how far you've come all souls grow through a growth potential and growth opportunities fire this month they're saying you are really going to shine and show that whether it's through word through deed it doesn't matter other people are going to notice that you've grown and you've changed but it's going to require a little bit of work on your part it's that going and looking through the past seeing what you can fix to move forward with that your last week's guide or lesson or challenge from the tarot is the ace of summer Opening your heart to love, the beginning of a new intimate relationship, rebirth of a current one, awaking of psychic abilities or spiritual epiphanies. This month, fire, this is a conclusion is what I'm hearing. This is saying you've done a lot of work, you've grown, you've deepened the connection with your partner. If you're single, you may have met somebody, which is even more cool to me. Uh, but with that, you've understood something more important. You've come to understand yourself. And this is a, a month of spiritual growth, and it could be the fact that this is more aligned with fire's energy, but it's really about your development as a person, as a soul, also as a business person, that was interesting. So this month is a growth opportunity for the fire family. This is really expansive energy that's coming in here this month. A little bit of looking into understanding who you were back then, and taking the lessons that you handpick and moving them forward because the lessons are what's important. Knowledge plus experience equals wisdom. And that is this month in a nutshell for you. You've had the experiences. What can you learn? How can you apply it? So with that, I will let you guys go. Have a great rest of your month. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button. Drop a like on the video. Comment down below. Let me know what your thoughts are, how this resonated for you. Um, and even if there's some constructive criticism, as long as we're respectful, I'm glad to hear all of it. With that, I'll let you guys go. Have a great rest of your month.